Yo, Bethel. How you guys doing? How's Welcome to Combos and coffee. coffee with me, Pastor Mitch, and, and his guy Miles. My guy Miles. Now, it is February, so we're going to be talking about love today and reading from Song of Solomon. So you better make sure you get some coffee for Combos and Coffee and get out your Bible. That's right. We're going to have a great time talking about love. Valentine's is this month. Family Day is this month. It is going to be so good. And the next month has my birthday in it. True. That's right, we're going to be diving in today to Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9. Now, I know we don't normally read from Song of Solomon in church, and honestly, I think that's on us. Uh, God placed this book in His Word, and it is such a beautiful depiction of the pure, poetic love that can take place between a husband and a wife. And is this not what God has called us to do? Is this not also a representation of the relationship that God often uses to describe how He he sees us as he is uh, the bridegroom and we are the bride. And so I think Song of Solomon is super important. And it's February here on Convos of Coffee with Bethel. We're going to be talking about the pastor's love stories. And uh, so I just kind of want to dive in to the one that's also provided in the Bible. So for those of you that don't know, my wife is Cassie and we met at Bible College. Now, Cassie's first impression of me was much different than my first impression of her. Uh, in September, our first year of Bible College, I believe I could be found in most classes asleep on the desk no matter what class I was in. So uh, if you don't know my story, about three or four months prior to going to Bible College, I gave my life back to God in April of 2006, 2007. And uh, I, I gave my life to God and I actually spent most of September uh, at Bible College still kind of detoxing from where I had come from uh, and also just trying to figure out what did it mean to go to Bible College? What did it mean to be here? Why had God called me to this? How was I going to be a pastor like my dad and, and all these different things? And so many of my classmates had initial impressions of me in September and it wasn't until October that I was really mentally, spiritually and emotionally healthy enough to really engage with my other classmates. And so I remember my first impression of Cassie. Uh, we were sitting in chapel service in uh, in Toronto at, at Masters Bible College and Seminary and Cassie came in a little bit late to chapel but Cassie came in with a Starbucks and it was like Hollywood like just like the lights came on there was a giant fan that was blowing. Cassie walked through the door and her hair was blowing in the wind and my breath caught and I was like I have to talk to this woman. She is absolutely breathtaking. And uh, so I found out because our school wasn't super big that Cassie was actually in my class of 20 other people. Nice. Well done. And uh, I found out that she was working in the library. So I started to spend a lot of time uh, reading books and taking books out of the library uh, just for an excuse to talk to her. I finally built up the nerve uh, to ask her on a date and we spent our first date going to see the award winning, the, nom the Emmy nominated, uh, Happy Feet, which is an animated movie of a dancing penguin. And honestly, if you haven't seen it, see it. It's it's so good. And uh, that really started our journey. Cassie and I started talking from then and uh, things began to get more serious. And uh, about a year and a half later from that moment, uh, we ended up getting married in between uh, second semester of Bible college. Not totally recommended for everybody, uh, but it definitely worked for us. And uh, now Cassie and I, we just celebrated our 13th year of, uh, of marriage and uh, things are absolutely amazing. God has blessed us with two amazing kids and uh, we have a fantastic ministry here at Bethel. And uh, even though COVID has been hard, um, really kind of, I guess the, the best part of it uh, through February, or through uh, these last months, almost a year now, is that Cassie and I, our marriage has gotten stronger. Uh, we've been able to spend more time with each other and a lot of that has been in prayer and, and just digging in again to who uh, each other is. And so I wanted to read uh, from Song of Solomon today because here in Song of Solomon chapter 4 verse 9, Solomon begins to describe his bride. And my prayer today for each person uh, watching is that you would be able to describe your partner, your husband or your wife or whoever it may be, uh, in these same words, with the same poem poetic race that Solomon gives to his bride. Listen to this. This is how Solomon describes the woman that he is in love with. 
You have captivated my heart, my sister, my bride. You have captivated my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine, and the fragrance of your oils than any spice. Your lips drip, ne drip nectar, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. A garden locked is my sister, my bride. A spring locked, a fountain sealed. Your shoots are an orchard of, of pomegranates with all the choicest fruits. Henna with nard, nard with and saffron, calmos and cinnamon, with all of the frankincense, myrrh and aloes, and all the choicest, choices, choice, spi choice spices. A garden fountain, a well of living water, and flowing streams from Lebanon. Man, isn't our God great? Our God, in his infinite wisdom, has included an entire book here dedicated to love. Love done properly in, in the confines of marriage. And so here uh, in February at Convos and Coffee, I wanted to dig into Song of Solomon. And my prayer is, is uh, that we would celebrate marriages more this year, in 2021, than we ever did before. And maybe dig into Song of Solomon a little bit more than we ever have before too. All right, Bethel, thanks for hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your coffee. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.